in fact, actual time. Ten one. Which we go through time. Mastery rings are what you do when you have understanding of who and what you really are. Take this away. I don't have the room. This is Abigail. Laura Tashi Delay from Quiet Event Buddhist Dharma Center here on the island of Kwai. I'm Lama Tashi. We present this class every Thursday night, 6 to 8, and it is recorded and put on our website for those who wish to view from the other side of the planet. Tonight's practice in Tibetan Buddhist shamanistic practice of Lamaism is so that people understand their true nature of their mind, and how to use it. And the word shamanism simply means how to access the natural world in a way that's in harmony with your true inner nature. So the outer nature, the inner nature, same nature. I just got back from Santa Fe, and before we do the start the practices, I want to make a little, tell you a little story about what we Lamas did there. First of all, it, it's set up as what they call a Mon Lama, which means something like a prayer festival, only in the Tibetan tradition, the prayers are all about what you're going to do for everybody else. And that is what's in this text. So all the people that hundreds of people that came to this Mormon, this prayer festival, got this text. And in it are many prayers that are based on practice of the Bodhisattva and this path to what they call enlightenment, which simply means how to become a mature human being. We're in, always in the progress of evolving. So on this planet, we've reached this stage of evolution. The word monlong simply means the mind in words. And when we do this, we're setting down in our mind aspiration for this life, what we're going to do with this, and future life. And all of us have future lives. And the word chuga, chu means offering, ga means voidness, or emptiness, which simply means the universe has infinite potential that rises out of the state of pure light or energy. And it's an unending process. It doesn't have a beginning or end that we know of. And so we use this text every day from about six in the morning to eight at night, along with a lot of other shamanistic practices that we did. And I'm just showing you that. And then when we finished up this program, there was about 40 women lamas and 20 male lamas from all over the South and North America. So it was called the Great American Mon Lam. And all of these teachers were, um, they were not only received very well and treated very well, but they were all um, appreciated for what, what we did and to come from so far away to this small town of Santa Fe, New Mexico, which has quite a large Dharma Center. I'm going to show you something that they gave us in appreciation at the end of this five-day session. 
and there, there's one of these on Airport Road in Santa Fe that's about 50 feet high and it's painted white. And this is a stupa or a children, which true means again offering, grand means mine. So this is offering of the mine. And all the lamas that were there received this um, crystal yoga, crystal stupa, and also a talk of the Shakyamuni Buddha, which I put back in the office. Very nice. And lots of offerings of money and what they call katas, which are so cloths, which are honorific. It's kind of like here in Hawaii, we offer the flower lake. That's in the Hawaiian tradition. So to show your aloha, then you present plays for all different kinds of gatherings, coming and going and so forth. Well, in the Tibetan tradition, soap was very valuable, so they have these white soap scarves. They look like this. And so whenever you say hello to your teachers or fellow students or whatever, then you simply offer a kata. This is called a gun. And then they take it and either keep it or they put it around your neck like that. You turn them plus. It was kind of like here in Hawaii, if you get somebody away and they put it around you. I'm just showing you that. This is Tibetan tradition. This has been going on for a thousand years anyway. Now, to explain why this is so so weird looking, it does look otherworldly. In fact, when I lived on Maui and we started building them there, um, we, we thought they were quite comical because they are. <laughs> but when we say nature of mind, this, this is representing actually the outer world is the five elements and your inner world of awareness is five applications of your what we call your true nature. So to quickly go over this, the bottom part, which has these steps going up, this is your body, speech, and mind, four steps. And then through practice, you learn how to bring those together so they're not scattered, which is the way we usually operate. Then this part here is the up to here is the earth symbol. It's all this square part. So that that covers that element. Then this part, which is like an upside down bowl, which you can't see it, but it's etched in gold with the door with the Buddha statue in it. That's the water element. Then from here to here is what we call the stages of development. This is all the fire energy. In this very top part, these two rings are to symbolize air, which is like a lotus in the air reflecting in water that it came up on. It. And then the very top is the sun and moon, which signifies space. And this little flame is your development of awareness. It, it's light itself is what it signifies. And all of this, you can see, is gradually pointing to the sky, which is where everything comes from and everything goes back. So they're all over the place. But these, the one we have here down in Moa is about 18 feet high, is strictly for healing. Excuse me, I'm just going to set this up on here. So anyway, that's quite on the way. And along with that, they give us this little book. It's, you know, in the Tibetan tradition, it's all about the, the Bodhisattva. The Bodhisattva was started with the original Buddha, Shakyamuni Gautama, 2,600 years ago. And this is how he developed. So this path was based on this enlightened nature, which all of us possess. It's actually innate. We just, most of us don't use it. When I say most of us, most of us humans, 
But this little book, uh, the Lama there at that center, he had these printed up. It's called the 37 Bodhisattva Practices. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say a few of them so you kind of get the idea. But when you offer your mind, you're, you're not offering the drama of it. In other words, in this physical world, everything is emotionally combined. And that creates the word drama. And all of us have this drama program. And we're all interconnected. In fact, everything in this universe is interconnected to you. So all of it is your life support. There isn't, there isn't anything separate. That's a concept. But that is also an infinite energy field that you can tap into. That's what this Buddha symbol in the middle of this shrine signifies. Everything interconnected, not independent. Independence doesn't work. Interconnectedness works. So I'm going to read a, a little excerpt from this. And it starts off, one is developing what is called the pure body, which means to be really healthy. Pure mind, which means to not be emotionally dependent. Beauty, the mind and the dharma's all pervasiveness, which is your true nature. The practice of meditation, yoga, and developing a view of what we term voidness. Illumination itself, which is what we take refuge in, our own clear nature, which is something like what the women have with their intuition. One, two, three. <laughs> you know, all you out there. Us guys, we, we don't have that, but we can learn. <laughs> um, honor, respect, and gratitude. And all of this is incorporated in meditation to what we call the timeless nature of energy itself, which is what we are. We're all energy creatures, and the universe is our energy support system. So this Bodhisattva, 37 Bodhisattva practices, I'll read a few of these. First of all, we, in the tantric tradition, we do what is called prostration. And this evolved from India to that, and um, it's just a simple practice of using your imagination and a prayer while you lay down and stand up. I, I usually demonstrate that tonight you got to move on. The second of this is hearing, pondering, and meditating. And the most important of these three is meditating, which is the actual practice of using your mind's imagination with focus, with, with developing a sense of presence, which is what focus is. The second one is breaking the mind of attachment and developing in its place what is called discerning awareness, which is a, another inner, infinite energy field. They say Buddha field, but that's the that's the first Bodhisattva practice. Well, we have attachment to everything we like or love. And they're saying that we should use that as a state of discerning awareness of what's appropriate. What's appropriate for you to do in your relations with others and relations with the environment. The second one of these is avoid harmful places. Well, the planet's full of them. We call them war zones. And you don't have to go anywhere to find them. They're in every neighborhood of humans on the planet. We would witness it as the domestic disputes or excessive violence with gangs or drugs and so forth, all of that. Well, these war zones, of course, can get much worse. Another one is Bodhisattva's practice is to seek secluded places where you can develop your inner nature. Um, next one is leave behind your drama mind. 
and move into a state of pure awareness by simply training your mind to be present in a state of presence in whatever you do. And I'll read one more. Abandoning evil companions doesn't mean we don't have to abandon you know, family members and friends just because they're not nice to you. What this means is people that distract you from, from this process, which is all the shamanistic lama is in here. It's a process. And there are lots of distractions anyway. I mean, we all have our TVs and computers and cell phones and our lovers, friends, and relations. <laughs> That's a lot of distraction there too. But they're not necessarily what they're talking about here. They're talking about people that actually cause you to do harmful things somehow, somewhere. And on and on. So anyway, this path of the Bodhisattva is all in this little book. <laughs> and the Lama of that Dharma Center gives this to all these students. Before I go any further, I'm always talking about what books are good guides for your practice. Well, Abby just got this from Amazon. And this is advice from the Lotus Board to his consort. You know, so this is between a, a guy and his girlfriend. It's my, it's my third copy. Yeah, this That's is, how good it is. I keep giving them to people and then <laughs> anyway, buying it again. If you get this book, <laughs> you'll understand why you're doing this, why you're developing using this weird Tibetan shamanistic meditation called Tantra, and in some cases, Sutra. So it's called Advice from the Lotus Board in this. A collection of Padmasambhava's advice to his consort, Yeshe Soigyo, who was the first Lama of the Tibetan tradition. So they're both Buddha. So that's they, what makes it two enlightened very beings, special. They, they work Tibet. If these two didn't appear in Tibet, it wouldn't be what we're doing right now. Just to show you how powerful. <laughs> Now, Lamaism. Lama means teacher or guru in Sanskrit. And speaking of Sanskrit, that's how this Dharma, which means wisdom, mind practice, has been disseminated all over the planet. And when we say Lama, the, the teacher is trained in the two natures of mind. Now, no, normally when you're a teacher, you get your bachelor and your master's and your doctorate and all that. Well, that's that's about the drama nature. See, how to survive, how to do something, but the way things already are. This other nature is how to take that and transform it into something that's more appropriate which lessens the negative energy on the planet and in its place causes healing. And the healing we're talking about is physical, mental, emotional, and of course, spiritual. Spiritual for us means to connect our heart, mind with the natural world around us and everybody in it. To do that, you need a llama. I'm going to show you a little picture. Now this, is my llama who started all this in 1977. That's this guy, okay? And, can you see that? Yeah, anyway, his name was Carl Rinpoche. And he came to Maui in 1977 <coughs> and hung out with us hippie pot growers and he liked us. Well, we didn't know it, but he was 
probably the highest developed human on the planet at that time. There are many, many, but this particular one had power, energy. But he didn't act like that. And, but he did perform some what they call shamanistic practices. And some of them were quite entertaining, like uh, making rainbows appear or have rain and then rain not fall on you, you know, things like that. Weird stuff. At the same time, he was, we were, he, he found us very entertaining because of what we were and did. And we were actually, as you know, to us, we were practicing meditation, but we were using a support which now accommodates medicine, we call marijuana. But this state of peace that it takes you into is actually what you accomplish in meditation practice. But that's not the end of meditation practice as it is with most traditions that teach meditation. That's a platform to allow you to experience what your clear mind is without thinking. <laughs> Now that's incomprehensible, but that's my definition. This other guy picture is this Lama at this Molong retreat. And he's this one lived to be 85, and he left. And then this one appeared in the Dalai Lama and a bunch of other we call high teachers, recognized him as a great reinvention of this one. Okay, so he's leading this retreat. This is the present caller of the shade, and he, call, he calls himself Yancey, which means here again. <laughs> and he definitely is. And a lot of the traits and, and program that this one was carrying, this one is now expressing. This is Lamaism. Now, you don't have to believe in reincarnation and all that. But we do know that we come from present past lives, infinite number. We do know that all the tendencies from those past lives comes forward into each life like this one. Because you have these tendencies and you don't know where they came from. Most of us can't remember yesterday, let alone last life. And so anyway, this is Kalyanti in the chain, and he was there not only to give us support and advice, but also to set an example of how to be ordinary when you got this kind of responsibility. And my last day there, I, I slept in the shrine room, you know, in the bookstore, and the mattress. I had been taken care of at somebody's house up until that night. And I arrived there late at night and one of the people there said, just go in the bookstore, there's mattresses in the bank in the back room, take care. And I got up at my usual time, which is daybreak, about five, five thirty, and I went out to sit where they have a breakfast area and tea and so forth. And this llama was already sitting there and he was eating his cereal and drinking his tea and he had his, what do you call these you put in your head? Heads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hooked into his little iPad on the table in front of him. Wow. Good morning. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, good morning. And the other while I was with him, said, go on in the kitchen and get yourself a cup of tea. So I did that, came back, sat down, and the sun started to come up over the mountain. I started, I, I do my practice. So I'm sitting there doing my practice. He's doing his your thing while he's eating his practice. And I didn't know it, but he took a picture of me. <laughs> didn't he? Mm -hmm. Abby got the picture. And I, I have no recollection. He was sitting right there across the table. So just to show you how Sympathically, they can be received in harmony. And of course, then my ride showed up and I left it away. But 
what is the what is the theme of this? The theme is this doesn't end. You know, everybody wants a beginning and an end. That's what religion is. That's what most Buddhism is about. You know, it's very religious and they think the Buddha is a god. If you follow those instructions, you're going to be heaven or something. Uh -uh. <laughs> when you when you leave this body, which is like a husk with your consciousness in it, you simply step into a different energy field. But it's the same energy field, it's just that you experience it differently. And a good comparison is your dream at night. Now, the dreams come from you relaxing into a state of sleep. And it's a habitual tendency. And some of these dreams are about what you're doing right now in this life. And some come from you don't know where. They can be pretty wild. That dream state is exactly what happens when you leave your body. And some people do this leaving the body thing intentionally, called astral projection. I don't recommend it, but I do have certain friends that are students that do this. It's dangerous because you're entering into a dimension of the spirit, which has there are four categories of these spirits, and each category has hundreds of levels. But they don't like us <laughs> humans. From heaven to hell and in between, these four categories, heaven and hell, then they have one called the Christ Spirit, and we have the war or God or demigods. So those four categories right now on this planet, which is why we're doing these practices, are totally rival. And it just so happens they could control what that stupid represents is the element. Well, what's the element? Well, that's everything. <laughs> that's your body. Your body's made out of these five elements. That's how your mother created you. You know, you can say God created you, but that isn't true. That's religion, concept. Your mother made you out of these five elements, and those five elements are the creation of everything in the natural world that appears. Which you, can, uh, which you can see, smell, taste, and touch. Why am I explaining this? Is because this is medicine. What we're doing. That's all it is. It's a, it's a medicinally quality program so that you can be healthy in your body, healthy in your relationship, and healthy in helping others. Or the environment. And that's a lot of responsibility. So, to get this rolling with these five elements, we're going to do meditation practice based on the five elements at two levels. First of all, how the body, speech, and mind works with your five elements of your body so that you become healthy because without good health, you can't practice. You won't practice. You're sick or whatever. And your mind has to develop using those five elements in a more spiritual application. And when I say spiritual application, I mean to befriend the spirits. So we're being riled by what we're doing to the planet today. Well, what? Okay? I mean, if you watch the news, which I do occasionally, there has to be something going on when you have 500 tornadoes in two months in the Midwest of the United States. There has to be something going on when you have these tremendous downpours and hailstorms and 75 to 100 mile an hour wind taking everything down the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico. What's going on? This is not normal. This never happened. So that's that. So we're going to start with this page. So this is simply concept, support, and activity, which you're going to do. So we're going to read this together. 
And if you do a lot of practice like we did at the home loan, this third prayer starts each session. It's the Bodhisattva prayer. But before we get to that, the first one sets the motivation called the altruistic idea that you are doing this for everybody else. And that includes all the spirits, animals, and humans. In order to attain enlightenment for ourselves and better ascension beings and our mothers, we, we now, now all together take a refuge and if possible offer prostration. We go for refuge to all the glories of the Lama. We go for refuge to all of the items or the symbolic beings gathered in our mandala time. We go for refuge to all Buddha. Those who have conquered their mind and gone beyond. We go for refuge to all of this supreme wisdom dharma. We go for refuge to all the noble sons and teachers. And we go for refuge to all the dakas and dakinis who are the protectors and defenders of the dharma, all of whom possess the eye of transcendent awareness. Then we say the Bodhisattva prayer. To the Buddha, Dharma, and this Supreme Assembly, we go to refuge until enlightenment. And May I, through merit gain from practicing the sacred perfection, accomplish Buddha for the sake of all intention being. So, everything you do from this point on is connected to this concept, this support, and this activity. And that way, you, you can make sense of it. <laughs> Estimation. Now we're going to chant this in Tibetan so that the spirits that are around us and inside of us and everywhere know what we're doing. And I'll chant the first part in Sanskrit. And the second two prayers we'll say together in Tibetan Sanskrit. Tadam yo wa nam de tadam yo te sen chan tam che yu di ne yu che ji si chang chu ting po da chi ti par yu. Now we'll chant the refuge prayer. Tadam yo wa nam de tadam yo te sen chan tam che yu di ne yu che ji si Just let the energy of the sound take it to heart. The heart and mind of compassion, loving kindness.
Now, we practice. <laughs> Meditation. It is the sixth discipline of this. They call the sixth perfection. The first one is simply generosity. Of sharing what your abilities and inclinations are that are good with others. And their development of your, of your heart mind. Generosity. The second one is morality with ethics and good manners. Our morality is very simple. Don't harm yourself. Don't harm others. And most important, don't harm the environment. The third practice is patience. Patience with yourself. Patience with your practice. And patience with everyone close to you or far away. Patience. And the elements of the environment. The earth, the water, the fire, the air. They have their own program. And they can support you or kill you. So we work with them. Diligence means this is a 24-7 program. When you get really good at it, it's no big deal because it's ingrained in you already. You're just simply bringing it into your daily activities and in some cases your sleep and dream state at night. Most importantly, you want to bring it into the program of leaving the body and entering into the next step. That's diligent. And that's also applied to meditation practice. Now, meditation is mind training. The lineage that I'm following with this Kalo Yanti Rinpoche and all of the teachers and all of the people that do these practices called Lama and their students, this mind training is two levels, a true application. You know, we have your cell phone with your app, or we have lots of apps. I mean, they're all free, but you got to know how to use them. <laughs> so this, these two apps are simply, how do you deal with the drama of this shared reality of which everybody is putting their slant on you from the moment you come out of the womb until you leave your body? It's called conditioned existence. And it is, in a word, suffering. Okay, so how do you deal with that? The other aspect of this mind training or reprogramming is like a computer. It's based on codes, algorithm, how do you say that? Mm -hmm. And these are to simply adjust not only the drama world, but also the, how you think and not think, because your mind does both. The thoughts come from some place you don't know where. They appear, they do whatever, things to your body and so forth, and then they disappear. So this understanding of this other aspect of your consciousness is based on zero and one. One is the thought, and zero is what, where it comes from and where it goes. So we're doing the same thing. That's how we made these computers. That's how this, you know, I mean, some alien didn't come by and say, here, have, have a computer. So we do that. Now we're going to start with the five elements of this algorithm, this code, and it's color-coded, and it looks like this. And we made this up in the 90s. This is a condensation of all the awareness factors and all the elements that do whatever, do everything. What we want to do is bring both sides of this together using the light of the mind, the clarity of your own consciousness. But it's the same code on both sides. 
So we have fire, looks like this red pyramid. Third, which is a yellow um, sphere. Actually, it's a cube. Space, which is a white sphere. Air, which is a half sphere with a, like a bowl with a lid. And water, which is round, like the space. And so when I met Carlo Rinpoche, he didn't give us any what they call high TC. What he did with us is he taught us the element. Well, I was a Taoist already in doing some Hindu practice, and I was raised in American Indian tradition. So I knew all that kind of thing. But this was the, the code. So the earth, the water, the fire, the air, the space. Okay. And he had us make these up out of dough, and then we colored them. They do that a lot in Tibetan Buddhism. They, they take their barley and, and make torment. Torment is an offering to the spirit. Tonight, to simplify this practice, all of these five elements are going to use the meditation the way we're going to do this meditation. But I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to start with the space, <laughs> which is right here in front of your eyes. Okay. This is space. But in this space is the earth, water, fire, and air, right? We call that elements or particles. So you sit, sit back straight if you can. You can do this laying down, standing, walking, whatever when you get to it. Have your hands in a comfortable position, either on your knees or in your lap. Head slightly tilted forward, so you're lining up energy centers from the head to the bottom of your torso. Mouth closed to start with, tongue resting against the palate. And your eyes slightly open, not staring, but just enough to let some light energy through from this program directly in front of you because this is what the brain does for all of the secretions of your body. There's a couple of glands in there. So that's part of the meditation. Later, if you want to close your eyes or have them wide open, that's up to you. With these five positions, you are ready to start the practice of focus and the mental process of the imagination with this five elements feeling practice. And it goes like this. Three. Consciously inhale and exhale. Diaphragm expands, diaphragm contracts. Be conscious of your breathing. Now, developing a sense of presence with this technique is applied to all traditions of meditation, martial arts, healing practices, everything. Now we're going to end the Tibetan method, which is called the three lights breathing practice or prana yoga meditation. And it goes like this. Using your imagination, 
Imagine the air that you are inhaling into your lungs as white light. And think of that as the energy of the life force of space itself. You inhale this air, visualizing the white light to fill your lungs. The next breath is called the middle breath or absorption breath, where the energy is spontaneously extracted from the elements in the air and passed through every cell in your body. When this takes place, you imagine them to be red light flashing through your whole body, top to bottom, and however you can do that. That's called the middle breath. Then you gather these two breaths together and exhale out the nose, what is called the healing breath. And you simply visualize this exhale in blue as blue light to go everywhere, to go to space. And I like the color of the sky blue, but you can have any color code of blue you like. Inhale white light, fill your lungs. Absorption breath is visualized as red light flashing through every cell in your body in a moment. These together out the nose is the blue light, healing breath to space. The next step, now that you've brought yourself into a state of calm abiding with this breathing method, take your focus off the breathing and gather the three colors together And think of them or visualizing that gathering of those three colors to enter into the very center of your chest, in the center of your body, and create there a tiny particle like a tiny star. And what you are doing is connecting to the infinite dimension of light itself, which permeates the boundless fabric of space. At the same time, you're developing what we call presence. And really, there's not much to meditate on. So you can relax and just entertain the concept of the energy program of this universe, light throughout space. Now we're going to take the infinite potential of this for the next phase, which is to expand with your imagination that particle until it appears as a tiny sphere 
of clear light. As small as you can imagine. And what you are doing is entering into a more confined three-dimensional world we call a universe. In keeping your focus and your imagination together, visualize that small sphere to expand to a white sphere of light about the size of your thumbnail. Not too big, not too small. Label that space. The next step is to imagine that white sphere labeled space to move out in front of your body and up before your eyes where you had your soft gaze. About two feet in front is appropriate. Next, expand it in size so you can see your physical body just as you are sitting inside this white sphere of light. Symbolic, symbolically, this is the entire life force energy or support of space to your body. Which is composed completely of particles called atoms. The next step is to share this healing energy psyche program by expanding this white sphere to enclose this island of Kauai or the town or city where you live inside. Keeping your imagination and focus together, expand this white sphere labeled space to completely enclose Mother Earth, including her atmosphere. At this point, the actual and imagined are the same thing. Expanded its eyes to completely enclose our solar system. All the planets, sun, everything inside. Expand this mental process to completely enclose our spiral disc shaped galaxy. Now leave your conceptual mind behind and entertain the concept or contemplate boundless space. When you enter again into this dimension, 
no meditation, just relax and be present. When you've had enough of that, the capacity of your mind filling with that, return with your imagination, your conceptual process, to reinvent the white sphere enclosing the galaxy. Then shrink it in size to just enclose the solar system. Smaller yet to just enclose Mother Earth. Smaller and smaller just to enclose this island of Fly or the town or city where you live inside. Then return to the original small size of just your physical form, just as you are, inside this white sphere of light. Receiving the full life force potential of the entire universe of space. To end the session, return the sphere in front of your eyes. Bring it to chest level and into your heart chakra, your heart mind. Visualize it shrinking in size until it again becomes a tiny sphere of clear light. And that returns to the size of the particle similar to an atom. And that blends with the infinite atoms of radiation throughout boundless space. No meditation. Simply relax and be present. Smile as you bring your awareness to in front of your eyes and into this room. As if you were in the room already. Any questions? I read Lama Kala Rinpoche when we asked him about this practice, why he gave it to him, why he even thought it was additionally important. Well, simply, if you can't use your imagination or your focus, you can't accomplish anything. <laughs> You know, like when you want to come to Kauai, you got to imagine that. Why? Walking on the beach with my dog. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Then you got to imagine the ticket, the airplane, and so forth. But everything's like that. And when you can't focus, you're, you're a scatterbrain. You know, it's called multitasking. 
And common day, everybody thinks that's the way to be, but actually, not. <laughs> So, but he said it isn't, it doesn't stop there. He said the focus of meditation, you gotta do that with anything you want to accomplish. You want to prepare a meal, you gotta, you know, be present, gather everything and cook it properly and present it, eat it mindfully. And you hear a lot about mindfulness in Buddhism and other traditions. This isn't really just that. This is creation. This is how you get what's appropriate. It's called the wish fulfilling jewel. And I'm 81 years old and most work. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a little example. This is a everything's in permanent, isn't it? I mean, here today, gone tomorrow. This whole universe does what it has to do the way. Yesterday I'm driving back, I, I have a truck with the plant. I recycle appliances. So I got these appliances and I took to a client who put these appliances in the back of my truck and I'm driving back from Princeville on a classically wide bridge and starting up the hill. I get about halfway up the hill, I'm doing about 40 miles an hour, and the truck in front of me stops. And he hit the car in front of me. Okay. Apparently, that person slammed on the brakes because they were working on the highway, which is something you got to be really aware of when call it two lane road. Anyway, I slammed into him, and his back end of his truck is now resting on my windshield. <laughs> and I'm very mindful of this. You know, I got my seatbelt on. I'm watching the airbags pop, and this plate that covers and bounce off my chest, right in my heart, <coughs> chakra, which I'm still kind of sore. But it was so cool. I just, wow, there goes my, there goes my whole car in my trunk, there goes my hood, there goes my window, and then I got this thing bouncing off my check, and bags smacking me up under the chin. Wow, there's really come up in the I didn't know that airbags exploded. Yeah, I've heard of But anyway, I'm stopped. So I just take a breath and strap myself. It knocked my slippers off my feet. They're jammed up on them. I got two knees that I'm hugging the steering column with, like a little bruise. And I calmly open the door and get out of the truck in my sock. And go over and sit on the Guardrail. I couldn't. I couldn't evade. Half. I got in half. I got halfway to the garden. But there's no place to really pull off. So there's my jump. That was weird. <laughs> but that's what presence does. It allows you to witness whatever is going on now, as it's happening. And it, it kind of like you hear seeing the movies when everything goes slow motion. Mm -hmm. You know, the long past, but it's all taking a long time. It's like that. But the way it hit me in my heart shocking was the most interesting part of it. You know, I thought, wow, oh, that's a big particle. <laughs> Um, anyway, impermanence. Now, 
when everybody looks at the front of my truck, I'm not going to do this. It was gone. Completely. No lights, no fender. Radiator. It smashed me. Confirming. You don't know what comes first. The next life or the next breath. And you should entertain that thought. Not just the, oh yeah, I'm going to die. And so what? So what? That's the beginning of your future. You know, we only have past, present, and future. The present is where, is where it's all taking place. There really is no such thing as the past because as soon as you send something, it's gone into the past. But we don't we don't see that. We think it's sticking around because we keep thinking about it. When you smell something, that sense of smell goes up here, then it, it does things to your body. But at, at that moment, it's in the past. That's the real present. Then you go to find the present. You can't find the present. Because it's a moment-to-moment -moment change. Everything's constantly like that rest. And you have to know that. It's a survival. Program. I learned it from the American Indians when I was young. My father was a doctor and he had all these wild Indian people as his patients. So he leave me with they're trained as brats and showing them. So what did you get out of this five elements? What what did you what happened while you were doing? Anything? Huh? My mind. Down. Yes, exactly. Anything else? You should be aware of what this is doing. It's not just the programs that train you to be present, use your imaginary process. It's the children of the day with the screens. They lost it. We know that. Because we teach them in the schools and high schools and so forth. And they're depending on this thing. The that thing, or the TV, they're not depending on their own power of their own mental process. You know, we come in the board, the board, the board, the board, the square. Yeah, that board, you know, not the blackboard. The no, board, yeah, the board. They were humans, but um, they were all interconnected uh, and, and it, into one creature in the center, but they were they really nasty, they just destroyed planets for their energy. But, um, you know, they, they, they were human, but they were machines. You know, they had like machines. pipes coming off of them in different places from one part of the body. So it's kind of really weird, but it's like, yeah, you know, so we're, you know, not me particularly. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm fighting against, uh, you know, people who walk around with a phone in their hand all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm thinking in a few years if I'm going to be strapped to it on or inspired on it. Yeah, they're already experimenting with yeah, that. Yeah. And so, you know, we can uh, ask Kirsty or whatever her name is, Siri, Siri, you know. And she will make all our decisions and tell us what to do. I mean, exactly. <laughs> when to so, get so. up, when to go to bed, when to take your energy. It's like, yeah, because you know, we're going to be totally useless. Yes, true. We'll board planes at the airport with a uh, um, a barcode on our foreheads, you know, and just walk by and it'll but read it, the it, barcode. <laughs> what we're doing, in comparison. <laughs> this screen has capability. It has infinite capability. And you can prove that because you have data. <laughs> Which is all the unused energy of all millions and millions of uncountable number of computers. As a backup, it's a program. And it works. 
And I used to have this wife, you know, and then somebody told me, you don't need that. You just go to take them. So my wife, I was a techie, so I said, hey, let me take them. And I threw that thing in the garbage can. Well, come to find out this doesn't exist. But it does. And so like that, your own mind is the best screen. And it's totally interconnected to everything outside. I mean, all of these things. But you can use it in a way that you're not distracted by all that other stuff. You know, we have war, we have famine, we got disease, we got poverty, environmental destruction, slave trading, everything. In fact, in the web, the worse it gets, the more the web uses it. We yeah. call the dark. Yeah. And a perfect example of that, of course, is cryptocurrency, which is like PayPal. But what what are we discerning here? Like I read to you at the Bodhisattva, one of the programs of the Bodhisattva is to take your attachment, the energy of the attachment, which drives you up the wall, causes overpopulation, eight billion people on the planet, sexing indiscriminately with attachment. Which is escalated into what we call desire, lust, greed, and so forth. <laughs> Run away, emotional program. So when you discern, you start inside. That doesn't mean you have to leave all this in place. You simply gather it and transform it into what it really is. What is it? It's no more real than my two-dimensional picture on that screen. Okay? It's no more real than this three-dimensional particle program of a body, completely made of atoms, which is changing, so every seven years I get a new one. And then if that isn't enough recycling, you discard this one and go on to your next life and reinvent yourself again. The problem with the next one as you do it emotionally. Oh. They don't tell you that. They don't tell you the danger of the emotion. And speaking of that, you take the five elements and you take all these emotions and put them in five categories. This is what they did in India before they did in Tibet. This is the basis of the Bodhisattva training of the mental process of illusory. That's illusory. You get that? But everything is so. Everything is illusory. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, all you're bringing in is a light show through your eyes and a vibration through your ear. Then you have a little smell, taste, and touch your program, and you hear that thing. Now, this thing up here arranges all that to make secretions that go through your body. That in this day and age, you're totally counterproductive. Because of the source. Okay? And what is the source? Your food, your water, the air you're breathing. It's stress. Then if that is enough, the vibrations of the sound. If that is enough, the distortion of all this chatter, moving, everything. Going into an airport? Wow. Unbelievable. I mean, if you have a sense of awareness to walk through an airport, you don't know how anybody could survive that. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. And nobody is paying any attention to anybody else. They're all like, <laughs> They're sitting around on the floors and chairs and standing. You have to have compassion. That's unawareness. It's working to do something. Take all those people and put them someplace else that they really can do, be just as happy where they are. They don't know what they got to do there. Just like you come to Hawaii or you know, 
You want to sit in traffic from 10 30 on in Kapar? You can do that at home. <laughs> so, when we do these elemental meditations, the ricochet, my teacher, Carl Ricochet, says that this is to get your body working in harmony with the natural world around you. Then take this thing and reprogram it so that the secretions going through your body are healthy. They don't get cancer and all the other weird stuff of your food or the water and the air we breathe. You know, I just lost my 59 year old son one week. Calls me up, I can't breathe. I said, We'll go to the hospital. <laughs> they calls me to the hospital and he says, Well, it's, I got cancer in my lungs and they say it's everywhere in the body. And he says, Good, go home and call the hospital. Week later, he's dead. I'm permanent. My truck's in permanent. My son's in permanent. <laughs> Everything. When you move into this program here, you're taking anger, which is simply an escalation of a very simple judgment. It's called aversion. Or that's bad. Well, that's bad to you, but it might not be bad to somebody else. You know, the wrong judgment. That's where you get attachment. Oh, that's good. I gotta have it. Hmm? <laughs> so we took these emotional programs. We. I have to say we because this lineage goes back 2,600 years of been doing it. They put all this attachment, aversion, pride, jealousy, and ignorance in these five categories with 20 some thousand escalations of each of those five energies as who our mind is, in, is causing us to be here, to exist. But what is the importance of this? Is these determine which of the six kinds of sentient beings you're going to be in your next life. Well, take the animal world. You want to be a cockroach? <laughs> Cockroaches are really smart. Well, they're very well. You can't kill them. You know, if you put out poison for a cockroach, the next batch of cockroaches that poison won't touch you. Pretty akamai, as we say in the world. Hunters, we know, <laughs> but that's all based on animal instinct. We're a little bit better than that. So if we take this program of pride, let's say pride. Well, pride is accomplished because you get what you want. Conceptually or physically, you require what you need. In such, most cases, more than you need. For instance, the very rich and powerful have a big problem. Arrogance, which is a form of pride. But for us down here, you know, they think the lower levels of existence. It's counterproductive because you're separating yourself. You're causing separation with that emotional tendency. You don't know that. Okay? And then you get into the states of what's happening with planet Dave. Extreme greed. Never get enough. Unbelievable. Insatiable. Okay? And that, that comes from you. The worst of all afflictions is anger. Aversion. It marks your mind in such a way that guaranteed you're going to get cancer. Just that one aspect of your conscience. People say, oh, cancer comes from electronics, and so your food, of course, your food is toxic, but that you can deal with that. So we have health issues. Your water is toxic, well, you can throw it. The air you breathe, well, Maybe have to put something <laughs> but this toxin of the emotion 
marks the mind in such a way that it won't go away. And you go into your next life as an angry, abusive, harmful human being, that emotion creates your hell realm. Oh. But in the same way, your arrogance creates the celestial realm that you have to climb. Which most of us See? So you want to be a god and goddess in the celestial realm or whatever that you think is the best god or goddess, Jesus or whatever. Good. You get a break. It's like here in Hawaii, everybody wants to go to Las Vegas. That's their that's their celestial. <laughs> really? And they go there, they lose all their money, you know, they're spending. They actually move there. Come back. <laughs> you know, did you have a good time? Well, no. I really asked him, no. This is better. Well, why did you go there? Oh, because I thought it was better. <laughs> Jealousy. That's subverting yourself. That's thinking you're less than. The arrogance is thinking you're higher than. The opposite, which comes from this anger program, jealousy, envy, coveting. And you have to understand that this emotional program can be very simply compensated for all of it. And we use it in a mantra. This is called tantric Buddhism. <laughs> now, this can be applied to anything. You know, usually when you hear the word tantra in the modern world, you think of sex. You know, there's a lot of sexual tantric practices being spread around on the web and so forth. And that's a form of tantra, which usually evolves from Hinduism or Taoism or some other tradition. But when we're talking about tantra, we're talking about Taking the actual energy of these afflictive emotions and using them to them. Oh. So you can recognize within yourself if you really look inside at your own thought process and mind. What's productive and what's not? What's appropriate and what's not? You discard. What's not? You delete. You do it on your computer. You get the delete button. But in this place, you, you have to you have to compensate where it'll come back. You know, we say what goes around comes around, which is the rule for karma. Well, most people don't believe in karma, so forget that. If we really believe in karma as a human race, we, whatever we say, think, and do, we wouldn't be in the mess of it. But this compensation means we're going to take a all that total programming and make it one mantra, one visualization, using what we call an illusory body called the deity, tantric deity, and apply it to our physical body and everything and everyone around. Okay? To do that, the Lama is already doing it. I am a Lama, I'm already doing it. So I'm not giving you something that I'm not already programmed. <laughs> you see? A lot of people give you stuff that they're not doing and say this is work. And then if you go into medicine, they do things to you and they don't test. And they're performing this acupuncture or whatever. They don't know that that's working. But oh yeah, I'm fixing no problem. Give me money. Okay, so same with your back sir. We're gonna do this. And this is called Chen Rezi, which is, in India was called the Balakeshwar. In India, they use that form. Okay, that's a thousand arm with 11 hips. That's a little bit of a stretch for us Western people. So what we do is we take it down into the way they did it in India to that to make it four arms. This arm is holding a lotus which symbolizes the idea of compassion and loving kindness blooming in your 
worldly situation. And then this arm holds a mala, or sometimes a symbol called a vajra, which is the tantric approach. They both work. But the key is your respect for yourself, everyone else in your environment. We call it the devotional. So then these two hands are like this, which they are in that deity. And actually, in the deity, there's one of those arms holding a lotus, and there's one holding the mala, which counts the mantra. So, and on the back, where the head is, it's got this sign, where the throat is, it's got this sign, and where the heart mind is, it's got this sign. This symbolizes the clarity of the universe itself entering into your consciousness. This one is the energy of that into your consciousness. And this one is these two together as kindness, which is the ultimate antidote, which is what your own mother did by bringing you into this world. Even if she threw you in a dumpster, she got you. Nine went back of kind. You know? So you have to, we have to honor them. So this whole thing that we're doing is the mother principle. This is all about the girls. And in this way, we can't compensate for the patriarchal overthrow of the human race. That's that. You too, Lily. Okay, so we're going to do this. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, but there it is. It's on the web. And raise the Omani baby home. All right, now, here's how it goes. This is kind of like we did the five elements. But what we're teaching our mind is that all our thoughts create our world, each one individually. This is the antidote for that. Back straight, eyes in front, mouth closed, head tilted a little bit. Breathe. Inhale white light into your lung as before, and hear the sound home. This is the vibration of that light as healing mentally and physically. The red light energy of the middle breath visualize going through your body, you hear the sound, ah, which is the base sound in Sanskrit of the entire energy of the universe. Then these two together, the own, the ah, the white and the red, Form the exhale of blue light out to space to everyone in space, everywhere. And you hear the sound, HUM. H U N G, HUM. Again, you inhale white light, so your lungs hear the sound, HUM. Red light energy through your body, healing, hear the sound. Oh. These two together out the nose is the healing breath to everyone throughout space. That vibration is home. Blue really light like is space. Home. Now with this three lights and these three sounds as we did before, as you settle, become more peaceful, calm, 
Then you take your focus off your breathing and gather those three sounds or those three color codes into a particle in your heart center. Connecting to the infinite dimension of space itself. And the energy of light that pervades this universe. You just sit present for a few moments. Then imagine that particle to grow into the tiny sphere of clear light. And then into a five colored sphere of light about the size of your thumbnail. That signifies the five elements. And inside we create the sound tree. HRI. And what this vibratory tantric sound is designed to do is simply take whatever form of attachment that you have to anything and transform it into a discerning awareness of what's appropriate and what is not. And in the process, magnetize what you need. Three, say that. Three. Three. Now sound it like a chant. Inhale. Three. Three. Now think of what you're attached to, something that you really like, desire. Bring that into your consciousness and sound the free. Free. Look. What is that? Three. That's a hurry. <laughs> no baby. See? But it creates the symbol of you as a body of infinite light, infinite potential. And that's the nature of the human consciousness. And humans are the only ones that can do this. They can't do this in the celestial realm. They're stuck with their arrogance, okay? And you understand that. So you have compassion for the poor ones in the heaven. You treat them kindly. Okay? But this compassion is extended to any kind of emotional conflict. And so we sum it all up with this sound, which is with these three energies working together, the home, the ha, ah, and the hum, all come together into this tree. And that sets up a creation patterning of this deity as nothing more than a rainbow moment. And you apply it to your physical body. So you think this physical body, the way you identify it, I identify it, disappears and in its place you got this male rainbow body. There's also a female, that's this one over here. Tonight we're using the method approach. And, this is, and it has a five jewel crown, which is those five energies transformed. It's got six kinds of jewelry, which means it's the six perfection practices of the Bodhisattva. It has compassion on one side and power and insight on the other with devotion and respect to everyone, regardless of their situation. Yeah. And he's sitting calmly, and down here is a little empty mirror. And this is where we're going. 
So everything that comes in front of you sensually, everything you think about, all your tendencies, everything you think you are, is an empty mirror. In your mind, it's like space. So that's the symbol of complete, clear of emotional dependence. You have to go someplace. That's unimaginable. Any human you tell me you can't, you can't work with your emotion. In fact, it's not good for you to even think. <laughs> They're not going to go for that. So this is a con job. <laughs> Who's conning who? You. And it goes like this. Visualize the tree in a five-colored sphere. Light goes out to the llama and all the llamas, because they all do this, men and women. They accept your light offering from your heart to theirs, and they return it to you into the tree as a power support. Okay, so you got like the PayPal, you got all of that programming entering into your screen here. Then, you become this rainbow body, which has been used for thousands of years. In India, it was called the Balakeshwar, and today it's called Chenerezi, same thing. And you sit like that. So now you're completely made of light. You've got all this symbology. And think of your mother directly in front, this same aspect. So here you are, you're this 3D hologram you created in place of your physical body. Then mom, who created you in front, also generates you. Then you do what you do with your mind anyway, you start to project outward. Then your father, all your relatives, all your friends, all your lovers, all your pets. In fact, the whole human race, eight billion humans. All this illusory body, bodhisattva symbol, generally Z. Then if that wasn't enough, you start to include all the animals in the ocean, and on the land, uncountable numbers of critics. Chen Rezi. All this rainbow body symbol. And the final step is to apply it to the four types of spirits which inhabit the entire universe. So in your mind, every sentient being that has a problem and they all do, we all do, is this illusory body is. If you can do that, and not many people can, but there's enough of it, the mantra appears in your heart center. It has six sounds. Two apply to wherever animals and humans take birth on planet. And the other four are for all the four kinds of categories of spirit inhabiting our world, our universe. Say Om. Om. Ma. 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 Say Me. Me. K. K. Me. Me. Am I? Home. 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 Home.
of this mandala that you are imagining, you and all mother beings as this bodhisattva symbol, rainbow body, they call it rainbow body, holographic symbol, and filling the entire universe, because that's what sentient beings do. But in your mind, it's also filling your mind with the visualization which causes this sixth level mantra to appear there's a circle of letters around the tree inside a five colored sphere, right in your energy zone, heart chakra. <clears throat> so you're entertaining the tree, the mantra of the six elements, and you and all beings as this bodhisattva symbol. That's it. source of the infinite energy of the universe as light. And your mind is making out of this as this mandala of this symbol of the Chen Rei Z Bodhisattva symbol, male, young, healthy, white in color, six kinds of jewels, five colors of silk, five jewel crown, all of that symbolic with the lotus and mala and hands in devotion. And you meditate. And by meditating and using your imagination and sounding the mantra, you become present. That's the wish fulfilling jewel. That state of present is the infinite potential of your own 
innate awareness. Clear of emotional dysfunction. Transform. So you are doing you. Just for a moment, enter into the domain of infinite light. It's similar to what our sun accomplishes for our solar system. And then, what are these six tantric syllables in this mantra? What are they doing? The Om is taking all the arrogance of all religious traditions and all their accomplishment of heavenly celestial birth and all the arrogance that goes with that into a state of equality. No supernatural. The universe doesn't work that way. No supreme, no divine, equal. Every animal, every spirit, every human, equal. That's the home. The awe is the jealousy, envy, transformed into an activity that uses the infinite potential of your mind to accomplish whatever is appropriate, whatever is auspicious is the word they use, which is my name, Tasha, means auspicious, suitable for loving kindness to increase. The need is in the human condition of neediness. And it transforms all that neediness into awareness of what's really necessary, what's really useful or appropriate. The pay is this ignorance of the animal world having to remain on that instinctual level without the ability to connect to their natural mind. The me is the spirit world of the deprived spirit. Never enough. 
greed, insatiable, extreme suffering because of them, transformed. into kindness, like one's mother, like the perfect mother. And then the home, the sound of all healing energies, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, applied to the extreme suffering of the realms of anger, hatred, rage, abuse, transformed into a sense of unity, wholeness, that's it. you can get a little more heartfelt feeling of this loving kindness of life. It goes like this in Tibet. <clears throat> and all of the Himalayan countries, from Bhutan to Afghanistan, Kashmir, all of them, they do it this way. Om that is called part one. But a creation phase of tantric practice using mantra, deity, and we call seed salvage, creation sound. 
Now we move into the second part. Imagine all these spirits, animals, and humans as this symbol of light, of energy, of power, of insight, of compassion, which is what it symbolizes. All of these sentient beings, animals, humans, and spirits, in their entirety, streaming into you as the central symbol, like rain into the water, into a lake. From every direction. And in this state of unity, you disappear your symbol into the six syllables of that mantra of compassion in your heart center. Then starting with the OM, you dissolve each of those six sounds into the three. The red three. And then the red three together with the five colored sphere disappeared into space. And do nothing. No meditation. And no blocking whatever thoughts arise. Let them arise. Let them appear and do whatever they want. Disappear. Bodily sensations that arise, same thing. Don't connect. Just stay present in your own state of awareness. Just as you are.
This is called the accomplishment phase of tantra practice, and it simply means the rest in your own natural mind, clear of emotionality and clear of the judgment calls of the central perception. Now that ends our class tonight, and I'm going to read what is called the auspicious prayer that causes whatever you think is appropriate to arise. It says, may auspiciousness be granted to all. That's number one. Number two, may all the light of the minds of all of the gurus and teachers of this tradition cause wish-fulfilling powers in all the people that hear them. Number three, May this be granted to all sentient beings equally. Number four, through this may all beings liberate themselves from emotional dysfunction and aspire to be a bodhisattva. And I'll read one more. May all of this be an offering to all of the men and women of this planet today who have developed this state of awareness and are using it to benefit the environment and the beings in it. And we say, Tashi Shok, which means, may this auspiciousness be accomplished right now. And at the bottom of the refuge sheet, we have a dedication prayer, which is how we end the practice. And I'll say, you can say it in Tibetan, which is on the left side, Sanskrit. Dewa di nerdu dan chantya chimpo nerdu nang dowa chimping maru pa dehi salam gopar shu danje kusu nimpai jimman dang Shoni Nagu Dimpai Jinma Hindu Miche Dumpai Jinma Ki Jitar Goma Momam Ju Bar Shok. And in Canadian, by this virtue of having realized Mahamudu, may I quickly establish all beings without a single exception in this state. To the blessings of the three bodies of the Buddha being accomplished. By the blessing of the truth of this wisdom dharma being unchanging, and by the blessing of the wishes of us, the Sangha, being unwavering, may this and all dedication prayers be fulfilled. May all the lamas have long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity, and may all their wishes be fulfilled. May all beings be happy, may all beings be free of suffering. May all beings establish themselves in bliss and equanimity. No attachment, no aversion, no pride, no jealousy, and no grief. Yeah. All women. Yeah.